So, my name is Isidore Matusho, as I have already said, and I'm a maintainer of an open source uh, application for something like a to-do manager, a little bit more complex, and uh, it's a desktop application, and I would like to tell you more about uh, how it is to uh, maintain a desktop application, which is written in uh, PyGTK uh, from, with uh, GNOME libraries. Uh, first, I would like to ask you, uh, who of you uses uh, Linux, maybe? Okay, so when you, when you are at home, you can try it at your, at your own, and uh, you will see a little bit more into, it, into that. So, uh, the application is called Getting Things Known. It's a wordplay from quite, quite common, uh, quite known, uh, metallic getting things done. As it said, uh, it was primarily developed for GNOME environment. Um, it was uh, founded by two Belgians back in 2008 and since 2010 I'm one of the maintainers of the project and uh, it has a lot of cool features. I would like to show a small demo to you. small screen so yeah. so basically you have a list of your tasks and uh, you can organize it quite easily where um, every task have uh, have its okay uh, have its title and you can put their syntax for sorry for <laughs> 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 Uh -huh. 
And then uh, there's also the possibility to synchronize your tasks. It means that you can patch uh, some task or something that looks like a task. Uh, for example, if you have a Bugzilla or maybe a Launchpad account, you can uh, fetch your bugs into your task manager. So all the tasks you work on, uh, all the bugs, all the issues that you should fix are directly in your to-do list. Um, not currently, because uh, for that you have to write uh, some code, and uh, unfortunately, it's not it's not so easy uh, to write a new uh, synchronization service because some legit because of the old legit code. But uh, we are working on that, so it will be in the future more easily extensible. I can show you it afterwards. So. It's basically the overview of the of the application, and I would like to talk how how it works or how to do a GUI in Python. And I will try to present all the advantages and all the disadvantages of working uh, of having a desktop app. So, how does uh, GUI programming work? Firstly, you define your widgets. Uh, how it should look like, and then you create connections uh, between the widgets. It's something like when uh, this button is pressed, call this function. And that function could do something, for example, open a new window, or maybe uh, some set uh, or change some label to something different. And afterwards, when you have those first two steps, you're done. It's nothing uh, complicated. And uh, that's the theory. The practice is a little bit different because uh, the first step you have to define uh, how it should look like those those widgets in the window. And for that, there's two possible possible ways how you can do that. First is that you can use a special special tool tool for that. It's called Light, and it, it will work. I will show you. So the tool looks like something like this, where you have the window that's there, and for that you can change things. For example, if you uh, would like to change the name of the button, or maybe if you want to delete it, you can, you can just delete it, save it, and when you run the app once again, you get that there's no button, and <laughs> and that's not what I wanted to show you. For example, if you want, you can add a new button. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, you can do, uh, you can create your your windows uh, in this tool. It's called Play. And uh, it was originally called. It was designed so that uh, somebody can actually design user experience. Will will create a window for you, and then afterwards the programmer will just do the events, the second step, connect the buttons and do, do the stuff. But uh, it's not so easy because uh, if you want, if you would like to do something more complicated like uh, add your own widget, uh, it's not, it's kind of hard to, uh, to put it there. If you have it in a SCM, uh, source control management, like Git or Bazaar, then uh, it's kind of messy to have, have changes because uh, in the final results, the thing is the file that is there. Just, just uh, one XML yeah. file, quite, quite big XML file, and uh, every every version of the program will uh, change the XML file in a little bit different way. So when somebody has a new blade, there will be not only the changes that he made, adding a new button or maybe renaming the label, but there will be also uh, changes like some parameters will change. Um, it's quite quite messy to work around. And other thing is that if you if you want, you can create the uh, widget widgets uh, from the code. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there is that, that you create uh, a window, <laughs> set the title, set if it's resizable, add some widgets like uh, Vbox, that's the vertical box. You can add more. There's a layout that you can add uh, more widgets into it and set the parameters. And uh, if you create <coughs> a complicated Windows, it's kind of hard to um, to write it all down, and uh, it's up to you if you if you are going to use the Glide tool, where you can uh, put it together in some way, or if you are going to write down the code yourself. And afterwards, when you would like to connect it, uh, you can connect the signals. For example, uh, there is the connection that uh, I would like to, uh, when, I, when the window is destroyed, I would like to uh, close, close the window, close the, the whole application. And, uh, yeah. So, that's basically how, uh, that's basically how the graphical user interface is programmed. And I would like to make a small overview of all other Features that you could you could use for uh, for pro programming. Uh, for example, if you want, uh, it's quite easy to create a new app, like simple simple window uh, with a form where you have the widget uh, where you have the widgets like buttons, labels, entries, and so on. Quite quite easily, I would say it's easier than than creating a web page and have and styling it because it's already done for you. If you want, uh, there is all also the possibility that you can create your own widgets from scratch, something like a web canvas in HTML5. And there is uh, an example of an application that I wrote like in uh, two like in two hours, and it's a graphical user interface. For uh, for connect stress, connect six, and uh, that's a game, something like tic tac but on the bigger scale, and you have multiple multiple stones that you could put on. So, for example, uh, 
when I put it there, the computer responds to it and the graphical user interface uh, can respond to my actions. When I click somewhere, it put there the, the stone and it asks the, pro the program uh, to get suggestions what would be the best way to, to play it. Is the AI programming prologue? Really? Yeah. It's a prologue. It was a school assignment. If you don't, don't believe me, I can show you it. <laughs> there is uh, some heuristic. I, I would say it's uglier than the Python. For example, there is some database of open books and, and so on. But, uh, the goal for, for this small small thing was to create a graphical user interface through a protocol so that I don't have to type it manually. And it was done in a couple, in a couple hours. And uh, it has a lot of advantages. It's only uh, 400 lines of code. And uh, there's the advantage that you, could, you can have on the web that you can run the programs uh, from Python. It's a normal Python app, so you can do everything everything you want and you can do it on the computer of, of the user. So it was it was perfect for this for this occasion. So uh, another thing that is that you can perfectly integrate it uh, into the environment. Because uh, there, there are a lot of protocols that you can use, or that you can use to get uh, it into your system. For example, for example, there's Dbus. Do you know Dbus? Okay, Dbus is an uh, inter inter process communication tool where. Where each application exports some uh, some methods that you can call, and then you can call those methods from from your application and get some information from the other uh, graphical user applications. For example, uh, when you have a network manager, you can connect to it uh, via Vbus. Uh, there are uh, some settings, access points that are currently available. There are uh, some access points, and for that, it's quite quite easy to do. Just have, just a couple of lines of code where you connect uh, to the object and call call some method of, the, of that object and then uh, you can access it. For example, uh, this snippet of code does that, it checks if you are connected to the internet and if you can access it, and uh, that is used, for example, when you can connect to the internet and the synchronization fails, that we don't show uh, an error for that. And so we don't have to do, don't have to call some special, special apps for that or so. So when I call, call it, it, say, it says that uh, currently I don't have the internet access for that. And also, uh, if you want, you can access your contact list from Empathy. You can send a message uh, via Pigeon or so. So you have basically the opportunity, you have the control over the whole system of the user. And you can do pretty amazing stuff with that. For example, if uh, there is the possibility uh, in the recent time that there is a central uh, credential when you would like to access Facebook, the user can add a Facebook account to the system and then you don't have to do anything with the authentication, 
you just call one vpass function and you get uh, the secrets for Facebook and you can access it from, from the app. There is also there is already the, the integration with I think with Shopwell and when you would like to post some pictures on the uh, on Facebook, you just press the button and it immediately immediately uh, uses the uh, the global system credentials. Also, the other thing is uh, that you can add to the app indicator. So when when it runs. Do you have for a plugin? You already have uh, in in integration into the in SysTray sys where you have the most important task there. If you want, you can add a new task. And uh, without having opened the, the window. Or maybe uh, Unity, you can right click the icon and you can add uh, a new task from that without having to open the window. So you can close the window, have it somewhere hidden, and then if, when you want to add a new, uh, new task, you just click on, the, on that. Uh, another thing is uh, GTG also provides its own debug interface. And it can be used, for example, uh, something like a uh, really simple read it later thing. Okay. When you are on the web page and uh, you don't want to read that, uh, you would like to do it later, maybe tomorrow, uh, you just press one button and the task is uh, task added into, it, into that. There is uh, already the task. And uh, if you select some text, it will be added to the task. No title is because there, are, there is no title in the web page. I think it's a little bit far. But yeah, it works somehow. Also, there is a quite easy uh, integration with Thunderbird where you have some mail and you don't want to respond to that, you would like to postpone to maybe to tomorrow, you can add a task directly from Thunderbird pressing one button. And uh, yeah, it's already there. With the content of the email. So if you want, you can do it, uh, you can connect it uh, and integrate directly into the environment so in that way that you can do with a, with a web application and with GNOME Shell there is, al there is already a plugin that uh, there, when you dis do you know GNOME Shell? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you display the, the, the calendar uh, you have already in the calendar the, the tasks from GTG and uh, if you press the Windows key uh, and you, uh, you start searching for something, you can you also search for tasks in your GTG. So it's quite heavily integrated to the environment. Also, the other thing is uh, when you would like to store data, uh, there is a standard for that. Uh, it's called XDG, uh, where it means basically. Uh, it tells you where you should put your data into and where you should put your configuration. If you, there's an easy way when you create a dot file, but uh, there are a lot of dot files for each program and it's kind of messy. And for that reason, uh, the standard is here, where you can specify where you want to store your data. For example, in GTG, uh, in GTG case, it's uh, where you would like to have your task stored, where your configuration is, and where is the cache, um, cache directory, where you, where you could save images and so on. Uh, for that, uh, the environment uh, variables could 
this ad, and you should uh, read them and do that accordingly to them. Uh, if you are lazy to do it yourself, the parsing of the environment uh, via OS, uh, I think it's OS environments or Sys environments, I'm not sure. Uh, you can use the library of Python XDG that it does for you. And also, uh, we use a special library for the configuration file where you put a dictionary and the library converts it into a config file and stores it uh, <coughs> for you. So, and, you, and it does all the parsing so you don't have, you don't have to worry about it. So, uh, what about these advantages when you are working on, on the desktop app? With, let's say that you would like to have a special behavior of your widget and then it's not so easy as it's a, uh, when you create a web. For example, <coughs> when you have a web application uh, and you would like to change that when, the, when you hover the button then uh, the button should change the color it might not be so easy in, uh, in GTK uh, because uh, there is limited customization that you can do and uh, there is no API for everything the hard core of GTK is written in C and you can't access it or, and somehow uh, rewrite it because there are libraries separately installed from your application so even if you create some changes it wouldn't help you and for that, for that reason, you have to uh, either do some, do some patches into GTK and push it to upstream and then uh, wait until all of your users have it. It's kind of... Uh, it's, not, it's not nice and you have to do something about it and then do some work around. For example, when we have in GTK the, the widget for trees, widget for tasks that are displayed as a, as a tree uh, we wanted a special behavior for example when you have a task that doesn't have a certain tag but all of its subtasks have those tags for example uh, when, I, when I discard those things we would like, and you press the music, you want to like to filter it accordingly, then uh, original parent, original task should be hidden, and all the subtasks should be, should be displayed. But it's something that you can do in a standard GTK, because uh, the widget was designed in another way, that when you hide a node, you automatically hide all it of its sub notes. And you can do that. So for that we used quite uh, quite uh, ugly hack when we created our own layer. So uh, it has all of our data and those data uh, when our data are changed it, uh, the request to change is, is sent to the special library, special library layer and this layer sends commands uh, to this to this widget something like okay uh, I would like to remove all of your tasks and then I would like you to uh, to add just those two ta tasks and when you change the title for example you send the change to the special layer and then the lay uh, then that layer will send a command to the widget to update it so it's kind of kind of messy and I get hacked. Before that, if you are trying, to, if you try to solve something similar, uh, there is a library for that. We we make it a standalone library. It's called Midlarge. It's based on Monty Python. Uh, that uh, every tree that you can see uh, is large. I'm not sure about the joke. And uh, and also. There's problem with threads because um, the GTK has 
uh, its own way how to handle the threads, and when you use the Python Python threads, uh, it will just freeze, or maybe you can't even run your threads. <coughs> For that, you have to enable the threads in GTK that will enable it, and then you can't uh, call you can't access the threads access the UI from threads whenever you want. So it's, you have to somehow work around it. And also, uh, when you work a longer time on a project, and your project is distributed uh, via uh, distributions like uh, Fedora, Ubuntu, and, and so on, all the others, uh, it's usually that uh, a lot of people have old version of your of your application, of your program, and uh, there are a lot of bugs that, uh, that uh, are reported, and those bugs tell you, okay, I have found this bug, and you just uh, you are just crazy because you solved that bug two years ago, and nobody nobody has uh, nobody has that uh, fix from you. So it's not so not so easy as uh, with the web applications and for that uh, there's some solution uh, you we have um, daily builds for Ubuntu or Debian based distributions it's, it's hosted on launchpad it's not solution for everybody but uh, those active members use it regular quite regularly and it's not so hard to build um, and package for Python application with RGDK. Another thing is there are actually two versions of GTK for Python. One is PyGTK, and that's that are <coughs> original bindings for Python to GTK that were written by hand by somebody. And now uh, with GNOME 3, there is a new version of GTK, and those bindings are not supported anymore. And for that reason, uh, GTK has a special uh, special thing. It's called uh, G-Object Introspection, when uh, the every every object in GTK uh, inherits from G-Object, and the G-Object uh, has ability to introspect itself to tell what uh, what methods it has, what uh, properties it has, and it exports into a standardized format. And that format is read it by Python, some, some Python library. And for that, the Python library behaves something similar like PyGTK. And as maybe as you can tell, it's ugly hack. And uh, at the moment, it doesn't work very well. Some things that work in PyGTK doesn't work in GTK3. It should be just small syntax change, but unfortunately, it doesn't work for everything. And, uh, but the G-Object introspection was originally built uh, that every language uh, have bindings, <laughs> bindings for that, including JavaScript, Ruby, Python, uh, C-sharp, and so on. And the syntax was somehow standardized, and it's more like a C, like a C, when you have a callback that, that you pass a method to to that and your method is called it's, also, it's a, little bit, a little bit crazy I would say so uh, I would like ask, to ask you what what do you think uh, what are you interested on and if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, have you or the project Considered using another library. I don't know. I know like, you can use Qt or something like that. And uh, I don't. I don't know the differences. <laughs> but uh, okay. why to use uh, PyGTK or GTK? No, and not the others. Uh, it was originally written uh, by two by two hackers that were <coughs> close to GNOME community. So the chain. It was uh, the decision was. Okay, we would like to have something that fits into our system, that have same same themes, same styling. And afterwards, we tried to somehow uh, disconnect the 
uh, user interface part and the actual business, business logic behind that, the task management and so on. It should work now uh, that if you want, you can create another, another layer, layer that could use another library, but uh, nobody haven't tried it yet, so if you are brave enough, you can, you can try it. Uh, no user, it was just, I was curious. Yeah, basically the difference between GTK and Qt is that GTK is used in GNOME environment and Qt is used in EDA. And basically the difference nowadays is a uh, little bit different syntax, maybe uh, small, small differences, but they are really, really similar. So it's not harder to use one or either. Yeah, or yeah. I will even say it's harder. Well, as far as I know, Qt does this thing, it's called QNL, some kind of uh, yeah. uh, markup cool. language for creating uh, <coughs> GUI. So I think that it would be easier to manipulate. Yeah. Well, you can, you, you can draw, it's similar to Glade, there is Qt Designer where you can draw your windows and your uh, dialogues and you can then use it in the same way as uh, uh, GTK and there are also two competi competing libraries for Qt. Well, so Actually, the, the same like, problem. If you want, I can have a small presentation about the we are using Q, but also C++ for our application, and Qt is a fully multi platform. So, except if yes. you are not able to, you can uh, use your application on Mac OS, Windows, and yes. other tasks. And I'm sure if uh, this library is supported. Yeah, yeah uh, but GTK also supports it, or GTK uh, in general. Unfortunately, uh, getting things known doesn't work that way because the original hackers that created the project didn't have any installation of Windows, so uh, they didn't have any way how to how to play with that on Windows. There were some ports on Windows, but those people didn't have enough time to maintain it and uh, the things to do. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> For C++, not, not sure for yeah, Python bindings. The Python bindings are buggy. Buggy, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, not buggy, they have, there's a disconnect from C++. Okay. Okay. Well, I would say Qt itself are limited similarly like GTK, I, I wouldn't say that, that there should be any difference. So you, you have maybe issues with some layer and design of widget or one widget in GTK, but you will have similar, similar issues with other widgets in I can show you our application. Well, I saw big applications in Qt, so you don't have to explain to me. <laughs> Basically, when you would like to make your own widget from scratch, you can you can do that and you can do whatever you want. But when you would like to customize the widget uh, in the way it works according to you, without putting much effort to create it from scratch, it's not it's not so easy. And some, sometimes I find that uh, PyGTK wasn't the best choice to make. <laughs> Maybe uh, PyQ would be better. I haven't I haven't tried it, uh, but I I, tr I played with uh, C plus plus Q yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and um, it works fine. Yeah, this is what well, I'm this particular problem Qt is better. It can change pretty much anything, but. Uh, Making the tree view in Python is is pretty hairy because uh, the C objects or the C plus plus objects they have the, don't have these structures so they get lost and then you get a crash and there's no way to, to manage them in Python so you have to be very careful there. Yeah, I also um, when we are working on the li on that library or the tree widget. We tried many things. Um, our own special tree widget 
model, I think, and it was possible to create a really strange version of, of GTK, GTG when, uh, when you could just scroll down and the application would segfault. And for that, there is no traceback in Python. So it's kind of hard to debug it. Go to Python 3. <laughs> Java use as well C libraries, for example, for uh, database layers. And uh, have you ever used Java GUI designer or whatever? Uh, Swing or ATV or whatever, whatever it's called. It's uh, horrible. I have a programmer. Oh, well, well so, so do I. But, but I really hate, hate Java designer. <laughs> there is and some designer in Java. Yeah, of course. And, and I was. Okay, so let's talk each other. Uh, oh, no, 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 it's gone. Well, no. That's fine. We have a great topic. Uh, <laughs> 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 topic uh, <laughs> I have partly connected question. Uh, do you yeah. use Blade on a daily basis? or? or? Uh, basically. <laughs> Because I was very frustrated every time I tried to use Glade or whatever designer it was, doesn't matter, it's, it, it was new, GTK or whatever, uh, I have ended up with messy code and um, red widgets and whatever. The current policy is when you have an existing window in Glade, you write, uh, you change the Glade file, but when you are creating a new window, you would rather use write the code all yourself because then uh, you don't have to, don't have to worry about the glade and uh, for some some reasons there are a couple of formats that are supported by glade there's original glade format some uh, XAML file then there is glade builder 
for GTK2 by the builder for GTK3 and it's kind of, kind of messy, it's a complex platform, I would say. All right. So you recommend to write it by hand? Yeah. If you don't have uh, something something really complicated. <laughs> when you yeah. when uh, there's there are a lot of widgets. Uh, Use by hand. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe uh, in that in the, uh, in blade. Thank you. Are there any other applications that actually use the mm, precisely the same uh, format, like that they can read the data I am uh, I'm gonna save in the getting things known? Uh, at the current time, no. Uh, there's the problem with uh, with the sync, uh, with the feature set because uh, some of the features that we have other applications doesn't have. That's a little bit hard uh, to deal with. Uh, for that, there is a synchronization. Uh, it was written a couple of years ago. The, the man who written that isn't in the community anymore. So we just we just maintain it somehow. Uh, if you want to like to write down your own service, you have to write about 300, 300 lines of code with your own synchronization, and it's, it's a little, little bit crazy. But the data are stored in open format as an XML file. I can show you. Where? some way to access the data from my phone, for instance. Yeah, for that, uh, so the synchronization services were originally planned for that. So we can, uh, you can send your tasks to some provider, uh, whichever you would like to. For example, remember the meal, any do, or whatever task manager you would like to have. Would like to have. Uh, then somehow reduce the feature set some uh, managers, task managers, doesn't have subtasks, some doesn't have uh, start dates, and so on. So, so to say, it would somehow work? Yeah. <laughs> of course, if you, if you want, you can contribute to the project. Any contribution is welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll ask you one question. Yes. Are there some, or is the application tested, or are the automated tests for this? Uh, it's, it's hard to test with. There are some tools for that, but uh, there are no uh, volunteers to do that, to go through that process. But uh, the library that's, that's between the TrueWidget and the data model, uh, it's, it's tested because it's uh, it's written in that way that it has some public interface that could be easily tested via our unit tests. Any other questions? <laughs>